Hi, my name is Mike Tice and I teach my face-to-face -face classes at the University of Wisconsin Marathon campus. I also teach for the University of Wisconsin online campus. I will be working with you in an application called Microsoft Excel. We are looking at a table of data and it has a list of states. It's got the regions which the states are in and then it has the 10-year census data. And the table, it right now the way it's put together is uh, rather meaningful. You can tell by just looking at it that things are listed in a recurring order. Okay, I'm going down and I'm selecting the table because what I want to do is contained within the data in the table. I want to take advantage of the fact that data is repeated like the regions and the state names. Okay, now the first thing that I'm doing here is I am going to check to see if this table in which my cursor is moving around has any empty cells because empty cells will really mess up the ability of the software to go through and filter and sort the data. So with the table selected I go over to find and select and I'm going to go drop down to the go to option and I'm going to within that dialog box go to the special box and I'm going to click on blanks and now I'm going to take advantage of the OK key. It immediately took my cursor and it brought it down to the empty cells. Okay, it just happens that there's a whole bunch of contiguous cells that are empty. This would have messed up my returned, my displayed values quite a bit when I was going to be using my features in the pivot table. I'm going to take a route right mouse click with my cursor out here on the row indicator, select the whole row and delete the emptiness. I just deleted the emptiness. I resaved the file. I have gone through this entire database now because if there had been other empty cells they would have come one right after the other and let me either put in the data or delete that cell. You don't want empty cells. The other thing you want to make sure is that you, you get familiar with your data so you at least to a little bit know what to expect. That's my little activity here for fine-tuning your table before you go into a create a pivot table. Thank you.